All right, what's going on, people? Um, welcome to a video. Uh, I know this hasn't been uh, the most consistent channel in terms of uploads, but I promise there's stuff on the way. I've been busy playing things like Among Us, like everyone else, and um, doing schoolwork and shit like that. Um, anyway, so now we're here to talk about, we are here to uh, answer a question that was posed by Suit Dumpling in a Discord server, um, asking, how do I get better at playing games um that is how do i get better i feel like i'm good at drafting i feel like i'm good at team building but how do i um get good at winning games and um you know executing correctly so that i end up with the win and this is a very important question this is a very broad question but it's a very important question because um from my perspective battling is the most important um way to be good at draft league um you can have a shitty draft you could have a shitty team build but obviously if you play shitty um you know most of the time your good draft or good team won't carry you as much as it would vice versa right if you're good you're you being a great player can carry a bad draft more often than a great draft can carry you being a bad player so learning sort of how to think about battling um, is really, really important um, when building, when playing games, etc. So uh, everyone has sort of a different um, take on what makes you a good battler, and that's particularly because of different um, styles of play, um, different sort of perceptions on what is a, um, a good uh, what makes a good player and that usually comes from different people some person might some people might be stall players some people might be offense players and you can perfect one or the other but obviously the best players are good at doing all of those things but um, I, I think it's less about play style and more about identifying uh, two things uh, one is um, win conditions um, and the other is um, positioning yourself to execute win conditions those are two separate things identifying and then positioning so um, this can happen both in team building and in uh, games so what i'm going to do today is i'm going to try and instead of explain things i'm going to try and showcase two battles in which i did two things uh, the first battle is in which i made sort of a game plan from the start and executed it correctly um, and from the start, I don't mean from the start of the game, I mean from like literally team building. Um, and then the other one will be where I didn't have as good of a game plan, but I had to identify a win con mid game and adapt my play style to, um, end up, um, you know, uh, executing that win con correctly. Um, I guess one thing I should say before I go into this sort of detail is what is a win condition? A win condition is a um, way in which you identify at any point during the building or a game process the method by which you will win against your opponent. A lot of less good draft league players aren't good because they have a very difficult time identifying how am I going to win this game and are more focused on the holistic picture of, oh, let me just kill this mod now, or oh, let me just do this um you know let me they get impatient or they they take a kill when they can get it and don't think long term so there's a lot of instances where say hypothetically you really need aerodactyl an aerodactyl to i'm just naming a random on to win the game with uh you know with dragon dance because aerodactyl gets dragon dance now but at the same time you you know risk something being scarf and you lose Aerodactyl midway through or something like that, right? That's you not playing to your win condition. You need to preserve your win condition at every all cost. Even if you, if you suspect something Scarf, you preserve it, etc. So the idea behind it is you identify your win con as early on as possible and you don't let anything bad happen to your win condition. Now your win condition doesn't have to be like a singular mon, like this mon will be the game. Usually it's more complex than that. It's this mon will set up on this mon, or maybe your win condition can be a set of mons. Maybe I eliminate all of uh, my opponent's stall breakers in some method so that my bulkier mons sort of, um, you know, 
outlast or, or just sit in front of the rest of my opponent's team or um, maybe it's a, a series of trades that you've envisioned right like if I kill, take this kill and then let him take this kill and then let me take this kill I'll eventually end up on top too many unfortunate players view it as a numbers game too many players view it as you know if I can be up four, six to four then I'm gonna win the game. That's not necessarily true. You could be down three to six, two to six, and still come up on top if you have a plan of execution on how you are going to win the game. So I'm gonna show examples of that. Hopefully that clears things up a little bit. If there's confusion on that or what a win condition can look like, ask me in the comments section and I will um, answer it as quickly as possible. So uh, the first game is going to be the game in which I sort of had a game plan from the start and executed it correctly. So my game plan here against Troy was, do I want to pull the spreadsheet up and, and show the team? I guess I should do that. Owl, um, season five. It's me more often than I defeat him, but this is still a good game. Um, this was his team. Very disgusting, fat cores with Mega Scissor Glide score, something I actually did a video on a few videos back. Great breakers like Thunderous and uh, Haxorus. Uh, more fat shit like Jellison, Aromatisse, etc. Um, one thing you want to look to, um, and I'll, I guess I'll show you my team as well, um, which was these folks um, right here. I guess my face cam is blocking the pictures a little bit. There we go. Um, shout out to Simon and Vepsis, my owl teammates. Um, but yeah, so this is my team. I got two top breakers like Necrozma and Zardex. Now a lot of this is going to assume you you know you draft it in a way where you have a versatility of Fatmons and, and uh, you know uh, breakers and things like that. So I have two really strong setup sweepers here on top with Necrozma and Zardex. I sort of realized okay, what stands in the way of Zardex from sweeping? Well, kind of a lot of things, right? Like Jellison stands in the way. Yeah, I'm never really going to oko it unless I have Thunder Punch, and I don't really know if I have room for Thunder Punch. Glyscore kind of stands in the way. Um, can't really run a Dragon Dance set because it'll take a plus one Flare Blitz relatively decently and KO me back. Uh, things like Yuxi can foul play. Scrafty in particular can intimidate me. So uh, Charizard has a lot of issues um, in winning this game. But what about Necrozma? Okay, Necrozma can basically hit everything with a Photon Geyser and a Heat Wave with the exception of Scrafty. So I, I, just because a set has one thing on the opponent's team stopping it, doesn't mean that you should not bring it. Instead, it means you should craft in team building a way in which you can make it your potential win con by eliminating the one thing that stands in its way. So that is Scrafty. So I said, how can I build a team that basically allows Necrozma to either win or break mid game once Scrafty is killed or weakened? Okay, well, here's how I can do it. I can start with a Charizard that just breaks Troy's team, break defensive mons, and will either force Scrafty in immediately or will break other defensive mons so that Troy is forced to use Scrafty more defensively once his other walls are broken. Once I do that, once Scrafty is weakened, then Necrozma can either, can either, you know, you want to keep your options open, can either break mid game or it can, um, you know, win in the end. Um, and I wanted to make sure I had a contingency for both, right? So you want to pair it with bulkier mons, right? You want to pair it with mons that will either prevent things like Scrafty from resting up, so maybe taunters, maybe um, uh, just stall breakers, things like that. Um, more of those. Maybe you want bulkier mons that are going to slowly whittle Troy's team for Necrozma to clean up at the end. Alternatively, you want those bulky mons to still fulfill the same purpose of if Necrozma rather breaks mid game and maybe takes like three or four mons and then, you know, Troy's left with two or three more, I want to be able to have a core of three, four defensive mons that can just sit in front of them in the end game and win. So I'll show you the team that I ended up bringing here. I ended up bringing, like I said, the Charizard that would break early game and either, you know, break Scrafty really early or break Jellison really early or break Gliscor really early. And then I brought the Necrozma that was going to either break mid game or clean late game. And this is all stuff I knew before the game was happening. Then I said, okay, this Necrozma set is contingent upon Scrafty being low. So I need to, 
bring Taunters. So I brought Taunt Skarmory, I brought Taunt Weezing. I brought Taunt Skarmory, I brought Rocky Helmet, which would chip Scrafty even further. With Stealth Rax, I would trip, chip some of Troy's Mons even further than that. Troy being Tangle of Boots, uh, my opponent. Um, I had to make sure I had a check for things that might offensively threaten these two things. So what offensively threatens Skarmory and Weezing? Thunderous in particular. So I had a Gastrodon that was never too code by it. You could tell I'm on a team with Vepsis because I have a rest and a sleep talk Gastrodon. Um, go check his channel out. Um, he is very good at making sets like these. Uh, with Floatstone to take less damage from Grass Knot, so that was my Thunderous check. And then, you know, Whimsicott is there to also just sort of defog and um, gradually chip things. So you, could, you can tell between the Sludge Bomb, will o -Wisk, Pain Split, between the Rocky Helmet, the Brave Bird, the Stealth Rocks, uh, Toxic the leech seed, the pivoting. The goal of these four is to progressively chip things and whittle things and just sit in front of things. So I can either I can do that before Necrozma to make room to, to sort of get everything arranged in Necrozma, or I could do it after Necrozma once Necrozma is like broken, like, you know, most of the things that would counter these mods. So I'll show you how the game went. Um, hopefully this is the right one. This is the right one. Cool. So Pretty straightforward team, nothing I didn't expect. Relatively unshocking. Um, I guess I was a little shocked Scissor didn't come, but I do have a Zardex, so, you know, is what it is. So I, I go with the game plan, I, I settled, I Mega immediately, I go for a Sword Stance, he goes immediately into Scrafty. Now this is a huge turn, this is a huge example of do not let the idea of being behind five to six scare you from executing your win condition. I said to myself, even if Flare Blitz doesn't kill, a plus one Flare Blitz doesn't kill, it gets Scrafty in range of my win condition, Necrozma. So even if Scrafty takes me out here with an Earthquake, with a Foul Play, whatever he wants to take me out with, getting an 80-90% chip on this is 100% worth it because I'm playing the long game. I'm not trying to put myself in a situation where you know, I'm, you know, um, I'm not trying to put myself in a situation where I'm like just trying to win by numbers. I'm trying to win in the end, and that's all that matters. A lot of players here would switch out their Charizard, say, okay, I want to go into Whimsicott. I want to go into Weezing, set stuff up. It wouldn't get you anything. I've already set up the Charizard. I got to commit to this. Boom, Scrafty is down to 13%. All of a sudden, Troy's Necrozma answer is very, very low. So he goes into Aromatis to sponge this heat wave, and this puts me in a great position to do one of the two things that I said I would do before, which is set up and um, break Troy's team mid-game. So now I've decided in the middle of the game that I'm taking this option and that I'm trying to play in a way that Necrozma will take as many lives as it possibly can before it gets toxic, before it dies. It's going to take as many lives as it can. And I'm going to try and position myself in a way where the mons that are left on Troy's team will be relatively walled by these things. So, you know, he'll play around with some of these. He's going to switch about. He's going to do all these things. I had the Lumberry tech for one toxic. I knew that I was going to toxic chip somehow. So that was just good prep there. And, you know, as time goes on, and by the way, I was psychic instead of a uh, photon geyser because I don't want to get stalled out. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, as you can tell, Troy is now pivoting around, but I'm forcing a lot of breaking, a lot of deaths. I, had, I did have to make a prediction here, Heat Wave, because I didn't want, you know, an extra thing, a Toxic. Um, so I, I put myself in a situation where I was able to break four Mons on Troy's team, and now, you know, he knows he needs Thunderous because it beats Skarmory. Otherwise, you know, the combination of Gliscor or Aromatis is going to do that. So I knew he would preserve Thunderous, so that's why I have this Floatstone Gastrodon to ensure that I am, you know, surprisingly going to take on this uh, Thunderous, despite it possibly having Grass Knot. Um, if I wasn't Floatstone, a Grass Knot here would KO me, but because I am a Floatstone, it does not. And, you know, now I'm putting myself in a situation where... Um, this Thunderous has a ton of chip damage off on it, and Whimsicott can do a great job here now of just whittling down Troy's team. So in this instance, 
the wind condition was not necrozma the wind condition was necrozma breaking for this defensive end game and that's something you have to recognize alternatively i could have done a defensive break for necrozma to win the end but because scrafty was uh you know ko'd so early on i figured this was the better option that was a judgment call that i made that i felt was the right judgment call to make so we sort of play this defensive end game out a little bit here and it um ends up working out in my favor with wheezing sort of um handling a Romatisse and then able to take one hit from Thunderous. So, I mean, I can I can go a little bit fast here, but this is an instance in which the plan from the start worked out. The plan was to break with Charizard and then, you know, uh, break, break with Charizard for Necrozma to break, and then Necrozma breaks, and then I defensively win. That wasn't the only way this match could have gone down, but it was the judgment call I made in the middle of this game in order to do it. I guess one suggestion I can give is to think about um, this almost as like a three-part story. Um, sometimes games are more complex than this, but I think for beginners, it's kind of an, an easy way to think about it, is how are you going to put pressure early or set the conditions for your later game scenario? So what happens part one? What happens part two? What part happens part three? Beginning, middle, end. In the beginning, maybe it means you're hazard stacking. Maybe it means you're sacrificing your hazard stacker and it means you're setting up all these conditions for all your opponents to be chipped and get in range of what you want your ending to be. In the middle, you do more breaking. You prevent your opponent from clearing hazards. You maybe uh, break to get um, to bait something out else out that would stop your, your end game scenario. But what you want to do in game is you want to think backwards. You want to think, okay, how am I going to win this game? How do, what, what condition does that rely on? How do I ensure that that condition is met? And that is working from backwards to end middle beginning instead of just playing it by year and saying, okay, I'm going to take out this mod while I can and then figure this out later. You're never going to win games like that. So it's about viewing your games in sort of this three-part story and working backwards in terms of your thought process. Let's look at a more complex example in which I didn't necessarily have a end game scenario as pre-planned out as I did this game. Um, and that is in a semifinals game against Metro, another spectacular opponent who, this was a game a lot earlier, um, in a tournament uh, setting in the semifinals, a tournament that I actually ended up winning um, alongside with my with my uh, teammate, Rocky Rolo. Shout out to him. Um, there we go. Here's the team. So uh, I guess I should also pull up our preseason brawl. There we go. Um so this isn't it tiebreaker drops there we go okay so this was our team uh kind of a wacky team with megalodios azumarill heatran kind of an interesting dragon fairy steel core here um things like neilego and then this was um their team so stuff like gotharita really bulky shit like clefable mega scissor rough to deal with so the plan here even though the from building the wind condition was not as clear i knew that one way or another i would have to break and then clean i would have to make clefable low i would have to make mega scissor low i would have to get rotom heat low so i wanted to diversify my options to make that happen so what do we have we have a breaker in heatran that has universally decent matchup against things like mega scissor clefable you want a, a breaker just broadly uh, but a like stall breaker because we're facing a stall team. Another sort of stall breaking option is, uh, you know, uh, an offensive stall breaker with things like Swallow. This thing probably won't clean up because they have priority like Bullet Punch, but it can punch a hole in some of their defensive mons or force them to sack some of their offensive mons, which will, you know, put a late game cleaner in a better position things like chip with stealth rocks but you can tell things like neo lego it could clean in the end with beast boost but it could also set up rocks and and just you know early on and put pressure on same thing with tangla or not tangla sorry with scrafty uh don't mind the name with scrafty which could sponge and take hits from something like hydreigon mid game or in the right conditions if clefable is eliminated by something like heatran or swallow could clean up with bulk up 
niche things like this blunder policy azumarill could clean up with uh blunder policy sing once it's at plus two or it can put things in a breaking situation where you're putting your opponent to sleep or just knocking off items same thing with rocky helmet rotom all around just a team that has a lot of potential breakers and a lot and a few potential cleaners this is a potential cleaner but also a potential breaker this is a potential defensive mon potential sponge or a potential um cleaner in the end this is a sort of chip uh momentum grabber with volt switch this is a breaker i could be a cleaner based on certain circumstances but it is a breaker this is a uh suicide lead or a cleaner in the end this is a stall breaker so diversifying your team building in a situation where you're not forcing your mons to do one singular thing is also a way to get better at mons because it forces you to think about win conditions in different ways and diversify um or rather adapt to the conditions set in front of you and this is especially important not just in the context of Oh, what's my opponent going to bring or i just want to be unpredictable it's also important in the context of you know do i have backup options if i get hacked a lot of people will be like oh i got hacked so i lost but you could have built better to you know ensure that you had a backup plan um sometimes in those circumstances not always but sometimes so you know if this azumarill doesn't actually get a speed boost off you know i have a secondary contingency plan in beast boost new lego or in you know a bulk up scrafty and i want to position myself so that that potential just in case is, is behind me as well so it's all about maximizing your odds for victory but also about identifying ways in which you can win the end so let's see how this uh team ended up playing out uh, i will flip it switch sides and reset so basically everything that was expected uh i don't think there was a breloom that was the one thing that was scary because of like heatran and priority on a swallow and scrafty but yeah, this was, um, in general, the team that was expected. So, he leads Scissor, I lead Rotom. I know for a fact that, um, you know, he doesn't want to get Will-O-Wisped or something, so immediate momentum, immediate chip as quickly as possible. This is the beginning. This is the early game. The plan is not necessarily set in motion. I don't know how I want to end this game yet, but I do know that I want to break things so that I have potential options open. So, let's do that, right? Unfortunately, he crits the Volt Switch, so I have a little bit of difficulty doing that because I'm not behind a sub, so I can't weaken this Hydreigon as much. It forces me in a situation where now I'm not able to use uh, my Azumarill as effectively as a cleaner because I'm forced to switch it into Hydreigon. So now it's time to use it a little bit as a breaker because now with Sing, I've sort of screwed over this Rotom Heat. Um, I've you know, put myself in a situation where I, I'm, I'm, I really am aware that I'm not going to be using this to clean. So now this is a question of, let's just do as much damage as possible. You know, I got a little bit of damage off on this scissor, which is good. I got a little bit of, I got sleep off on this Rotom Heat. Azumarill did great to put, to set conditions for me to be in a good position. Potentially I could set up a sub now on this Rotom Heat with Heatran to break some more. I can, um, you know, start setting up bulk ups on this Scrafty. Maybe I can, even try and miss a sing in front of this Rotom Heat with a Zoomerill and win in the end. So I still have those options open, but I'm breaking to open up possibilities for myself that I can identify later on. Going to Poison Jab here, a good prediction on his end, but you know, a prediction that sometimes pays off for me because he gets that Rocky Helmet chip. So now he's in range of things like Swallow. So just more and more chip to set the conditions for a later on game. Even though a Zoomerill's low, even though you know, not everything's uh, in the best situation um, uh, here with, uh, just because not everything's in the best situation here um, with, you know, HP compared to my opponent. My opponent is relatively still high on health. I'm still in a situation where they're just sleeping, where something's sleeping, where I have a lot more breakers than he does. So, you know, the chip is going to matter a little bit more on my end, just thinking about the long term. So, once again, Volt Switching, getting even more chip on this Rotom um, is extremely important. Um, like I said, again, this sleep is especially crucial for me now to set up a substitute with my Heatran, which is absolutely massive. I can Magma Storm here and either eliminate this Rotom or put it in a situation where, you know, I am uh, going to be breaking it and putting it really low. So, 
you know, here he'll wake up, or, uh, I don't know what the fuck I did here, why didn't I Magnastorm? Uh, <laughs> sometimes you have brain farts, um, but, you know, clearly the substitute wasn't broken, so whatever. Um, anyway, uh, I'm still, once again, pointing myself to a situation where now this Hydreigon is toxic, so now this is going to be slowly taking ship. I can go into Scrafty here now. I don't want to go into Azumarill because um, I don't want Azumarill dead. I think Azumarill is still useful for, for a few things. Uh, so I don't want to necessarily get rid of it. So now I'm forced to, okay, what is my least likely win condition here? Clefable, he has not brought it out at all. It does not seem like I'm going to be able to eliminate Clefable for Scrafty to win. So now I have to shift its role in this game for me in a potential cleaner because I don't think it's going to be because I think there's too many obstacles that stand this way to being a sponge to take on this Hydreigon, which now involves Hydreigon taking more chip thanks to Toxic. Now I have to make an effective double. This is going to give me more information. Is Clefable really fast? Yes, Clefable is really fast, which means that uh, it's going to have very little um, HP. It's going to be or it's going to be a little easier to break. Cool. Now I'm in a situation where I could do the same thing with Heatran again. I can slowly chip things with Toxic, even though I miss Toxic. I still have a contingency plan. I've still put Heatran in a situation where I can maybe do something more later on. I still have Rotom Mo, which is an effective switch to this season of Toad. Either way, uh, you know, I'm still in a situation, even though I'm lower in numbers, even though he has rocks up, some of my potential cleaners like Swallow and Neolego are looking like the two most likely cleaners in this game are safe. And it's not about your entire team being safe, it's about your win conditions being safe. And currently these two are looking a lot safer to me than his Hydreigon, for example. So even though I'm still down in numbers here, and this game is a close game, you know, he's still he still has me on a ropes in a lot of instances. I'm still in a situation where I feel comfortable with where I'm at. Now Swallow comes in. I, I had a decision, right? I, I, I could go into Neolego and try and, you know, um, try and, uh, you know, clean up from here. Uh, but I don't think Sludge Wave would have killed, and it just didn't make much sense to me. My only real option was uh, to go into Swallow anyway, plus things like Gothry to stand in the way. So maybe the plan here now is to get Swallow to bait in something that would stop Neolego. This thing baits in Gotharita, and now I'm able to 3 hit KO Gotharita. He actually goes for Torment, which is the best possible option, but struggle kills, thankfully. Um, and I'm in a situation here now where, um, you know, I have killed one of the things standing in the way of Neolego. So even though Neolego's original possible role was to set up rocks and chip, I've played in such a way where now I'm re-identifying Neolego as the potential win condition and saying, okay, now I'm going to play the game in a way where everything is in range of Neolego. This means a few things. This means Scissor needs to be chipped. At all costs, I need to ensure that Scissor is chipped. This also means that I need to get it in in front of something that isn't Scissor because I need it to get a special attack boost from Beast Boost so that Power Gem KOs this Scissor. So. This means getting it in in front of Clefable. This means getting it in in front of maybe Hydreigon, if Hydreigon can get shipped a little bit more, or Seismitoad. If Seismitoad can get shipped a little bit more, I can kill it with a Grass Knot. So here, I switch out to Scrafty because I don't need it anymore, and I don't want to make the 50-50 call yet. I might need to at some point, but I don't think Scrafty is necessary anymore in this game. So I'm happy sacking it, even though it's at such a high HP, because I know that it's not going to do anything to achieve my desired win condition in Neolego. It's not, since Clefable's fast, it's not going to be able to iron head Clefable. Hydreigon is already pretty low. It's not going to do anything for Scissor, and it's not going to do anything for Seismitoad. This is something else that a lot of sometimes new players will fail to um, consider, is they might look and say, oh, Clef Swallow's dead to, or, you know, only well, can switch in one more time. I'll just stack Swallow here because it, it's lower on HP. No, you need to stack the thing that is least valuable to help you get your win condition in the end. In this case for me, it was Scrafty. It did not speed anything. It didn't help me at all. So Swallow still has some utility. It can break things like Clefable. It can break things like Cetus Dude, break things like Hydreigon. But Scrafty did nothing. So even though it was at like 80%, it doesn't matter. It was useless. So identifying those things as well. Identifying what you don't need is something to practice. Anyway, I sent out Heatran. 
do the breaking thing again. Um, this is huge because free substitute, but also, um, uh, you know, now that I toxic this season toad, it's going to be slowly in range for something like, um, you know, uh, fucking, it's going to be slowly in range for something like, uh, grass knot from the like, that's what I was trying to say. Now I have to get a situation right where, um, I, you know, switch and swallow. It's a very bold play, but I need to do it because I can't lose Heatran yet. I need Heatran for breaking things like Clefable still, or, um, you know, I can't lose, I can't lose Heatran here. Uh, so that's, that's sort of the big thing. So I boom burst, get rid of Season Toad. He can't go into Scissor because then it gets in range of Neolego and I win the game. So he, I'm Babiri Berry on Neolego, by the way. So he thinks that he might be able to win with um, Bullet Punch Scissor now, or, you know, soon enough, because it'll KO Neolego and everything will be great. But no, this is a huge turn as well. Remember how I said I need to get damage off on Scissor at all costs? Some would say this is a 50-50. This is an instance where I don't think it is because I've made a judgment call that said if I get this play, if if I boom burst and he bullet punches, I could still win by breaking with Heatran a little bit. Hopefully, maybe. But if he U-turns as I go into Heatran and he goes into Hydreigon, knocks my Heatran out, I have virtually no chance to get this scissor lower on health anymore. My only opportunity to get this scissor lower on health is if I just boom burst it now. And he might consider it a 50-50 go for U-turn. If he ends up going for bullet punch, so be it. I feel like I still have a win condition where I can, you know, get Heatran to uh, either kill Scizor or get damage off on Hydreigon or something, right? I want to I, I, I think Heatran is more useful than Swallow. So I'm staying in, I'm boom bursting, and I end up getting the call right. I don't want to say it's a 50-50. I end up getting the call right, and it was the most useful thing for me. Now I get to send in Heatran on momentum um, and get a uh, substitute off. He ends up revealing having Focus Blast, which is terrifying, but I say, okay, my win condition, even though I you know have less Mons, is to get this Clefable chipped so it is in range of, uh, so it is in range of freaking uh, Sludge Wave, right? So I get damage off on it and then I taunt it. So I'm not gonna get more damage off on it. I'm gonna taunt it so that it can never get more health up. So Neoligo is always gonna kill it with Sludge Wave. That's very important. And Scizor is now chipped. So I played to that end game. So, as you can see, it ends up working out. He might think he has this game clinched because he can bullet punch with scissor. Element of surprise is really important um, in this sense. Um, I'm able to get the beast boost, end up win the game. So I'll let that play out for a little bit. But as you can see, I still maintained that same pattern. I still maintain the pattern of early, middle, end, but I decided what the end would be more towards the middle. So sometimes that can change, right? In the beginning, I said, I know I'm going to have some breaker clean up at the end based off of the matchup. And sometimes you just have to make that assumption based off the matchup. Beginning, break, right? Taunt things, make things sleep, um, chip things with toxic damage, random shit like that. With momentum, with volt switch damage, get things chipped. Part two, play around so that I can identify a win con, which means using Swellow to break things like Gotharita, Scissor, um, Seismitoad, whatever it is, use things like Swellow to break offensively so that a different Mon that I will identify during this process as well has a reliable endgame to execute. Endgame, execute that win con. So essentially break with Heatran in a sort of like chip defensive way to get everything in range of Swellow's Boom Burst. Boom burst with Swallow to get everything dead that Neolego needs dead. Win con, win with Neolego in the end. So once again, it still follows that three-part process, but it was a little bit more thought out in the game in this instance rather than the team building segment, which is the one with Troy. It can happen in either direction depending on the matchup, and it's something you just have to get used to, make a judgment call on. 
Uh, last piece of advice I guess I would give is to play on the ladder. Try and make your own team that has multiple win conditions and multiple sort of um, roles. So I guess, you know, maybe a good thing to start with, I like to think for beginners, is to make your own weather team. I think weather teams are great ways to figure out how win conditions work, which means, okay, in weather teams, for example, you need to, you know, maintain some of your defensive mons. You also need to maintain your weather. So you want to, you know, play the mid game so you preserve your weather. And then the end game, your cleaner can win in the end. Sometimes on weather teams, you have secondary cleaners. You want to win at those in the end. Build your own team. It doesn't have to be weather, but I'm just suggesting weather and play on the ladder. And just as time goes on, try and execute win conditions and think about how am I going to win this game and think about that in the first 10 20 turns of the battle try and work your way to execute that and eventually it's just gonna come over time it's something that takes a lot of practice and experience and things like that but hopefully hearing um, this is what you need to do this is what you need to think about is beneficial um, and if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments um, about anything and I will address them and try and be as um, helpful as possible um, but yeah this is just sort of my perspective and take on what a player that um, you know understands the game itself well uh, ought to think about during a game that would make them successful at executing a win so hopefully this helped a lot um let me know what else you want to see in the future and i'll see you later